Hello and welcome to Max8 tutorial number 25 for Track Looper Part 4. So, you undoubtedly remember in Parts 1, 2, 2B, and also Part 3 that we've been working on this for Track Looper. And it's pretty swell so far. We added a bunch of stuff in the last tutorial. Um, like key commands for controlling what track was uh, recording. Um, and we do that with a caps lock uh, thing. So kind of if I push my caps lock down and I push the number one, you'll notice right here that I get a number one. And then if I push the tilde down, I get a thing as soon as I push the tilde down. So here we go with the tilde going down now. The tilde is now down on channel 1, and now I am going to let it up. Now I'm going to push channel 2. And now the tilde is down, and I'm letting it up. And uh, I guess I'll have to do it for 3 now. Oh, okay. Tilde, 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 3, 3, 3. And for 4, I just push the 4, and push the tilde down again. 4. Four. The tilde's down. Four. Okay. And then, of course, um, the other thing that we programmed in there was the space bar. So if I hit the space bar, it should just start playing all of them. Four. The tilde is now Four. down. The tilde is down. And Four. now I'm going to let it up. Four. The tilde is now Four. down. The tilde is down. And Four. now I'm going to let it up. Four. The tilde. All right. Well, that is fabulous. But, um, and I'm, I'm not all about perfecting these things, but I did want to show you one last thing that is just so nice that they've um, decided to include in Max, and that is this new key mapping function that you see down here at the bottom. When you press it, um, when you um, press this orange uh, key control down here at the bottom, you can you see all these things that light up orange, and that means that you can map keys to them. Now, you could map to these um, objects individually, but the problem here is though on a looper it would be nice to be able to control the volume, but from a computer keyboard there's no slides. So I'm going to leave that to some sort of future idea about hooking to MIDI. What we'd like to do is be able to make each one of these um, channels become either active or inactive. I mean, stop or go. So what I'm going to do is make a new object here. I'm going to type the letter N. I'm going to, whoops, I'm sorry. I'm going to turn off the key commands. It's sort of locked. It, the key uh, mapping mode doesn't let you do anything else. So here we go. So I'm going to make an LED. I'm going to type the letter N and type LED. And there's our LED. And um, what we're going to do, well, what I'll do first is just show you how to map to it. So there's the LED. Now, just one quick thing here. Since I'm, I'm going to put it up here, um, I want to make sure it's above everything else as far as layers go. So I'm just going to go right up to the top and say, arrange, bring to front. Now, I believe it's at the front because it's the newest object, but this is just in case. Okay, so there it is. And now we come down here, we hit the Assign Key Map. Now we click on that object. Oops, sorry. We click on that object, and you see you get the Enable for Mapping. So now we're going to enable that object for mapping. And it lights up. And now we're going to try to put this on channel 1. So right below 1 on a keyboard is the letter Q. So I'm going to push a Q and watch what happens right there get a little tiny light that lights up. So now we'll take the mapping away and we'll lock our patcher. And now this is what happens when I hit the letter Q. The LED turns on and I hit Q again and it turns off. So you can see that that's a good shortcut for um, doing the thing we did last tutorial, which was key mapping things. Um, using the key and key up commands. Now we have a way to do this by just um, using this assign key map down here. It has its advantages and disadvantages. I will just say that. 
But in this case, if we want to just kind of be down and dirty and put these things in here, this is a great way to do it. So I'm going to unlock my patcher again. I'm going to put this thing down here. And now we're going to um, go back to uh, patching mode or take it out of presentation mode, if you will. So here's our LED right here. And let's put a message under it and make sure we know what an LED does. So do that. We'll lock our patcher. And now we click. You get a 1. Click it off. You get a 0. It's a lot like a toggle with a light on it. That pretty much sums it up right there, right? Okay. So without further ado, um, what what do we want it to do here? If, if it turns off, we want it to tell this um, channel to stop. This is channel one. And if it turns on, we want to tell it to go from, which is like hitting a zero. So it's actually backwards. We have to stick a select object in here so that we can decide what message is sent out. So type an N, type select. And then our two possibilities are 0 and 1. So we connect that up there. And then we know that if this thing um, gets a 0, we want it to say stop. And if it gets a 1, we want to tell it to go to 0 and start. OK, so let's um, put it back in presentation mode and see if that actually works. So I'm just going to hit a Q right now and see how it works. So there we go. Now, you'll notice that 1 has stopped going around. I hit the I hit the Q and it stopped. And now everything else is stopped. I'm going to hit the Q again. Actually, I'm going to turn off sync. You recall sync every time one goes around, then it sends out a sync pulse and it starts the other ones whether they're started or stopped. So we're going to turn sync off. Oops. We're going to turn sync off and then we will hit the letter Q and there it goes. Okay. Okay, and then I hit the Q again. Off on, off, on. Okay, so it works, um, but we also see that we're going to have some other challenges. Nothing triggers channel 1 to play, so that's not going to be a problem. And that means also we no longer need a 0 or a stop here, so that's nice. This is for looping. For crying out loud, this is a looper, so we could just get rid of that too. So let's um, go back into our patching mode here, or close uh, presentation mode. <clears throat> and um, though these are, I'm going to just unlock it here. So we could, we don't want to delete them because select is actually using them to send a message, but we do want to take these out of presentation mode. So I'm going to take all three of these out of presentation mode. And we're just going to have our single button here to run it. And then what we would like is something that tells um, that uh, bangs a one in here when the patcher starts. And that is our old friend load bang, unless there's a load bang inside here. Let's take a quick look. Oops. Lock our patcher and double click on this. There are no load bangs, but we could put one, well, let's just put one outside. So all we need to do is send a one to all of these and they'll all be looping and then we don't have to worry about it anymore. Okay, so that's what we'll do. We'll just uh, unlock this. We'll put a new object, load bang. What is a load bang? Oops, I'm sorry, not even load bang. Let's learn a new one, load mess. Um, load mess, just instead of sending out a bang, it sends out whatever message you put in here. And since we only want a one, that's all we're going to send out. So load mess one means when this patcher loads, it's going to send out a one. So now I take this and I send it to each and every one of these um, uh, groove patchers. And 
and I let go of my shift key, and that's that. And now I'm going to delete all these X boxes here, being somewhat careful not to delete anything else. Okay. And now, just for good measure, we're going to lock our patcher and double click on this because this patcher hasn't opened since this was created. And so we want all these to be on loop. Okay. So now, this we can turn on and off with Q. We know that. But we also know that when this comes around, um, when this uh, first track comes around, as soon as it gets to the end, it's going to send a pulse out to all the subsequent tracks um, through this gate, in fact, right here, this, this gate here. And this is the sink, which opens and closes that. So what we want to do is now make an individual um, gate for each one of these that when we say, oh, this one's inactive, then it won't listen for that. It won't listen for that sink and it won't start. But if it is active, it will. So now, I know that was as clear as mud, but we'll just, uh, we'll just go with it for now. So what we're going to do is uh, make a new LED over here for track two. And then, <clears throat> you know, it'd probably just be easier, I'm going to delete that, to just take them both. The LED and the select object. I'm going to option click on them and drag them over here. Okay. Now, when we turn this track on, we are going to get a 1. That'll be um, this outlet. And when we get that 1, we want to be able to receive a sync pulse. So we want to turn a gate on. So we'll need a gate. And I think the gate defaults to one. There we go. And we're going to want to, let's see, I'm sorry. One is going to come out here. It's going to hit a bang. And we want it to turn this gate on. And we also want it to um, send out a zero to start groove. And we can do all those things with the trigger object. So let's make a trigger object here and type an N trigger. So the last thing we wanted to do is, I know this sounds funny, send out a zero. The first thing we wanted to do, because it reads from right to left when it's sending out these pulses, is to um, open that gate which is sending out the number one. Okay, so there's the bang if the input matches one. And it's going to send a 1 out to this gate and open it. And then it's going to um, start. I mean, then it's going to send this pulse through the gate. Excuse me, that 0. It's going to send it through the gate and down here to groove, right where zero was going. Now, um, as you can also see here, this is the sync pulse from the old version. So we're going to run that through this gate too, because as you'll see in a minute, this is the new version. Run that in the right hand inlet, because we don't need a uh, zero and stop anymore. We're just going to delete them. Oh, no. We, <laughs> we, yeah, no, we can delete them. In the first one, it was nice to have them around, but now we're tired of them. Okay, so here we go. We have an LED. We have select. We have our trigger. It sure does get um, crowded around here, doesn't it? And we have our gate. And supposedly, oh, and that's, um, that is all 
for telling it, yes, let's go. Now we have to tell it what to do when it stops. And so we can say when it gets a zero, it's going to have another trigger event. So let's make another trigger, type the letter N, trigger, and the last thing it's going to do is send out the word stop. But the first thing it's going to do is close that gate, which is by, by sending out a zero. So this is going to work slightly differently. Um, so it's going to receive a bang here, and it's going to send out a zero to close the gate. Or maybe I've done that wrong. I have. Let's, let's take a look at this again. Maybe what we want to do is send out the zero last, and then send out the stop first. And I think you'll see why if the more smart people here watching this haven't already realized it. So we're going to send out the stop first because it has to go through the gate. It doesn't really have to. We could go around it but then we'll send out a zero to close the gate. So um, let's just uh, lock our patcher and see if this in fact does work. Oh, uh, we may have to record something on channel two, but I'm not sure. I'll see in a second. And now the tilde is down and oh. I'm letting it up. And now the tilde is down and I'm letting it up. So there we go. So the reason I wanted to get all this uh, compacted into one unit here is that, uh, oh, and um, did we get this sync pulse coming in there? Yes, we did. Okay, good. So now we can take this and just use it for each one of these units over here as well. The only thing we have to be very careful about in all this confusion is to make sure that any sync pulse coming through here um, eventually goes uh, through the right place on this. So what I'm going to do is actually encapsulate this little group here, the select, the two triggers and the gate, and I'm just going to hit um, encapsulate. and drag this thing down here and rename it. Um, uh, channel control. Oh, J Johnny channel control. JW channel. Okay, whatever. So that's what it is now. And we can we see exactly where these go here. This one's going to go down to the right-hand side, and this is our LED. And that means that we can just take the two of these and uh, duplicate them and move them over, which is always my favorite way to get things done. Okay, so working sort of backwards here, the uh, outlet here comes in the right-hand side over there. So I'm going to do the same thing here, and the same thing here, that outlet to there. And then the uh, sync pulse for each one of these. This is for channel 2. It doesn't really matter. I know they, they're they all just the same sync pulse. but And I'm going to move this sync pulse over to the right-hand inlet there. And now we should be able to get rid of that zero and that stop, and this zero and this stop. And now I'm going to, because I duplicated these and they were all in presentation mode, I'm just going to make sure that I select them one more time. I'm going to take them out of presentation mode and put them back in presentation mode. That way, they'll show up exactly where they are in presentation mode. Whereas, since I duplicated them before, they might all 
when we go to presentation mode be piled up on top of each other and then it's confusing to figure out which is which. So there they are and now we can actually um, go back to presentation mode, click over here and then go sometimes you just can't get what you want. Then you can try to go to presentation mode. There we go. And now I'm just going to move these over to their appropriate channel. Just like that. And now the fun part, we come down here and we click on this orange thing and we see that this one's mapped but this one maybe not so we click on it and we say w and we get a little thing over there i think they've already been enabled for mapping because they were duplicated from each other so i'm going to click on this one and i'm going to type the letter e and we get that little red light in there it's hard to see i'm not sure if you can see it or not and then I click on this one and I'm going to type in R. Why am I choosing those letters? Just because they're directly below 1, 2, 3, and 4. So it'll be easier for me to remember that Q, W, E, R, which are right below 1, 2, 3, and 4, um, activate or deactivate the tracks. So let's uh, get rid of this key mapper now and see. Um, the tilde is now down. Right, so there's one. There's two. Now, the tilde is down. And there's three. And and R unfortunately does stuff in Mac. So just a second here. Four. I'm just gonna the see if Four. I'm locking my Four. patcher. Four. The and I'm gonna hit down. R again. Okay. So if your patcher's not locked and you hit an R you get the uh, file browser, Four. I guess, but when it's Four. locked, the tilde's down. you get Four. this. Four. Four. The tilde's. So that um, should be good advice to you then. Uh, don't use key commands that when your patcher's unlocked would cause something else like N or I or F, or you're going to end up with a lot of, um, of uh, what it is new objects, integers, or float objects is what you get for those key commands. But it's really cool. Now we've got our, uh, besides being able to record at will by, by using our caps lock thing, uh, we can uh, uh, turn the whole thing, oh, <laughs> uh, we can turn any track on we want by using the key commands uh, Q, W, E, and R. So there we go. All right. Well, that is it. We've uh, we've learned a whole new thing about uh, keyboard mapping to these things, and we've also done it the old-fashioned way in the last tutorial. So I leave the rest up to you, and I am going to enjoy myself now. Um, with an embarrassing amount of four-track looper. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I will catch you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching. The tilde is now down on channel one, and now I am going to let it up. The tilde is now down four. on channel one, four. and now the tilde is down to let four. it up.